itself I can see that yes, I am there and the body is there and I am coexisting with the body. Now, going further I can look into the needs. So when I look at myself, I can see that my need is happiness. The needs of the body are physical facilities. Now happiness, so the right feeling that gives me happiness like trust, respect, all these feelings ensure happiness in me. So my need is happiness. The body doesn't need happiness. And the needs of the body are physical facilities like food, clothes, shelter. That also means that my body needs food. I don't need food. Isn't it? I need respect. I need trust. I need right feelings. I need happiness. But the body is there with me, so I feed the body. You can also see that whatever physical facility I require, it is required temporarily. So we had our breakfast, then we had tea, then we had lunch, then we again have tea, we'll have dinner. Temporarily, from time to time. Yeah, so I am saying that this Atma is a word that we have come across. That may be the same as I, but I have to start looking at myself. Then maybe I am able to understand what this Atma means also. Yeah. But, but the happiness comes, physical body doesn't have any happiness. Yeah, so that's what is it written here. Food, even good food. Food is to make you, like, make you happy. Pardon? It makes you happy. What? Food also, anything, whatever. You wear a garland. Okay, the body doesn't know anything about this garland and touching your body, right? It's because it's got no sensation, it's got no. It's, 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 it's like a good effect of everything. General aspect. Yeah. So, how can you have a happiness? Happiness has to be come from heart. Yeah, so that's what it's written here. Happiness is my need, not the need of the body. Correct. correct. I mean, happiness is my need. The need of the body is food, clothes, shelter, such things. And whatever I require for the body is temporary, from time to time, not every moment. But this you see, I want respect every moment. It cannot be the case that you want respect when taking breakfast and then don't want respect. Is that true? No. Even before breakfast, after breakfast, during breakfast. Maybe you are you know, served food at home, at home, your, you know, your home, and the plate is pushed to you. Eat, you hungry person, you know, all the time begging for food. How do you feel? You don't feel respected. Maybe you eat because you are feeling hungry, but you feel disrespected. For so the need of the body is met by having food, but need of the self is not met. But as a human being, I require food as well as respect, yes. The respect is a need of mine, which I need every moment. And it is qualitative, it is a feeling. It cannot be quantified. Here it can be quantified. For the food, we can quantify. How much food I require in a day. In a family, you know, counting all the persons, how much food we require in a month, in a year. That we can quantify. But we cannot quantify respect. I want 2 kg of respect, 3 meter of trust. We cannot talk like this, isn't it? So this is not quantifiable. This is qualitative. If I want it, I want every moment. If I do not want it, I do not want it a single moment. For example, respect I want, I want every moment. Disrespect I don't want, I do not want it single moment. Thus it is qualitative. Here I want, but for limited time, limited quantity. Can you see this? As a human being, I require food as well as respect. I require physical facility as well as happiness as a human being. But these are two distinct kinds of needs. Maybe you are you know, roaming in the city some evening and you meet an old friend of yours and he takes you to his house you know, and then serves you very delicious, very kind of exotic kind of food, right? And the moment you have eaten full stomach, he or she tells you that, oh, you might not be able to get this kind of food anywhere else. Anna? Whenever you feel hungry, come to my house. How will you feel? 
Respected or disrespected? Disrespected. So the person was able to feed for the body, but was not able to share the right feeling with you. Will you go to that house again or not? No. Maybe there is another friend of yours, he takes you to his house, right? And talks very fondly with you. He is an old friend of yours. Oh, 10 years back, what all we used to talk, where we used to go, what all we used to enjoy together. And he has been talking to you for hours together, not even asking for water, tea, right? So that will also not do. But still, since there is a feeling of relationship there, you can always say that, okay, you know, get some tea for me, or let us go and prepare tea together. I am feeling hungry. Let us cook something together. I am feeling hungry. So these are two different kinds of needs. But as a human being, I require both. Can you see that? Is there some need of the body which is continuous? Is there any need of the body which is continuous? Yeah. Oxygen. Oxygen. Do you need continuously or time to time? Can you inhale oxygen continuously? <laughs> <laughs> No, I am asking, is there any physical facility that you require continuously? Pardon? Heartbeat. Okay. So, this is an activity of the body. I will come to that. Now, if you look at air also or oxygen, you don't require continuously. We inhale oxygen, then exhale carbon dioxide. If I keep on inhaling oxygen after 3 minutes, it is enough. Isn't it? There is not a single physical facility that you require every moment. We require physical facility but from time to time. And there is a quantity. How much air I inhale? That depends on the need for air in the lungs. But here, right, I require this feeling every moment. The expression of the feeling may not be continuous. For example, you meet a friend of yours with a feeling of affection that is acceptable to you naturally. You embrace the other. That is an expression. You do not like to keep on embracing continuously. If you keep on embracing continuously, it becomes a huge problem. <laughs> so the expression with the body is not continuous, but the feeling is continuous. So are these needs of the same type or different type? What do you think? The two needs are of the same type or different type? Different type. Are both types of needs important? Do you want to fulfill both types of needs? And are you working to fulfill both types of needs? Now when you are talking about wants and needs in the morning, what is happening? If I try to fulfill this need of the self through physical facility, then my wants and needs become different. Otherwise, if I am able to identify the two kinds of needs correctly, then the two are the same. My want grows because I am not clear about the needs. I try to fulfill this need through physical facility. Then my wants keep on growing. Basically, I want respect. But if I associate respect to a car, what would be the price of car that will ensure happiness in continuity in me or respect for me in continuity? Can never be made out. So you can see that these two you know, sets of needs like right understanding and relationship are related to the self. This is related to the body. Both needs must be satisfied for human being to be fulfilled. <coughs> so right understanding and right feeling is my need. Physical facility is the need of the body. A common problem is that I assume myself to be the body. So what I do? The physical facility that I require for the body, like food, clothes, I try to fetch respect out of that. Now you just now do an experiment. You go to some party with a very kind of fancy, costly garment, okay, fancy cloth. And then try to see what you are getting out of your cloth. Are you getting respect or are you getting envy? <laughs> what are you getting? If both are there, then this cannot ensure respect and continuity. It is not definite. 
somebody may feel jealous of you somebody may feel you know shower respect on you and the person who showering respect on you will not also shower in continuity isn't it it may also fetch disrespect maybe you know some friend of yours wanted some help from you in the past you did not offer the help and you purchased a very kind of costly thing out of that and you are showcasing that in the party the other person may feel opposed to you that this person did not help me at that point of time when i needed his help and see he is consuming this much this happens in the families does it happen or not <laughs> so if i am trying to associate respect to physical facility there is neither definiteness nor continuity but since i require respect and continuity i try to make it unlimited hai na i try to make it unlimited because this is required in continuity and the limited facility is not able to ensure that fulfillment so i try to make it unlimited adding more and more to it now why should one person purchase 1000 houses if the person is given the task of cleaning the house by himself <laughs> his whole life is gone <laughs> isn't it there was one president of philippines who had to flee the country when there was a coup in the country and when she was fleeing from the country she had her slippers in three aeroplanes is this enough having so much of slippers so that you have to escape from the country and you know, with three aeroplanes full of slippers in fact she took exile in england and then this magazine frontline and you know, their correspondents went there and interviewed her and they found that during her exile also she is purchasing slippers right now this kind of madness could be there that's why the wrong this symbol has been put here so unknowingly we are accumulating more and more to fulfill that need of respect which is never going to be ensured from here more than what you need not unlimited more than what you need is wrong see the aspiration is to make it unlimited though you are not able to make it unlimited if one has to make out and how many zeros have to be put on the right hand side in salary how many zeros are enough <laughs> keep on adding zeros <laughs> we try to make it unlimited though we are not able to make it unlimited we are not that greedy <laughs> no i am not <laughs> talking about a single person i am just saying that if you are not able to make out the need for facility rightly it will be the case in noida i can see that 5 years 6 years back not all the houses had cars okay then people had cars and during the pandemic there was some saving also now most of them are replacing their small cars with big cars because they had some saving yeah and there is no space in the parking for you know parking that big car many times the pillars are so close that the car can't go to, go inside and then there is a fight for parking lot this is the case that is happening so when i have for example if i am looking for a car why do i need a car for transportation if i am the only person sitting in the car and going from one place to another that space is enough for me if i have a family of four people that small car is enough for me but i am replacing that small car with big car for the sake of what maybe respect <laughs> so there is something called peer pressure no everybody in the colony is going for big car so i have to go for big car so that need i can make out even without looking at other car isn't it so i can make out how much space i require in a car i can also make out how much time i have to spend in a car 
if I am moving in the car all the time, I am going to ruin my health. If my office is just one or two kilometers from my home, I can walk on foot. Isn't it? I can even cycle if it is 10 kilometers from my home or 5 kilometers from my home. I can even cycle. That will add to my health. But if I am all the time driving in a car, that will ruin my health. So we have to look into those aspects of living. So ultimately, it leads to deprivation because I am wrongly associating the self to the body. Now, we can look at exploitation and deprivation of society. We may try to make rules and norms and codes of conduct, strict governance rules, but that will not help unless this part is clear. If this confusion is there, ultimately whatever rule you make, people will go for accumulation indulgence with a feeling of deprivation. So maybe we are caught up in this loop. There is a feeling of deprivation inside that I don't have enough, so I make more effort for physical facility by whatsoever means possible. And I try to accumulate, but still it is not unlimited, so I still feel deprived, so I still go for this, and this becomes a vicious cycle. <coughs> Isn't it? So are we caught up in this loop? <coughs> so an essential takeaway from here is that we can make out how much physical facilities we require in a life, in a lifetime. You know? And then we can make out how much we are earning and in how much time it is going to be more than required. If you are able to make this out correctly, you feel much more relaxed and comfortable in your life. I can see that in the organizations, most of the problems that are taking place are owing to two, thing, two things. One, people do not have the feeling of prosperity. So they all the time are comparing in terms of money or wealth or physical facility with each other and trying to move ahead of others. And that's how there is a lot of envy and competition, which ultimately spoils the teamwork. And second thing, they don't have the feeling of relationship so that they are able to share with the other, accept the other with a feeling of affection. And that's how we are doing so much thing in the organization which is not required at all. It is completely unproductive work. Spending, if you try to analyze it very closely, you know, if you are working five days a week, nine hours every day, how many hours we did productive work and how many hours we did something which is unproductive because there is lack of relationship or the lack of feeling of prosperity. Take a mic. The, the challenge you have right now is there is a competition, whether healthy or not, let us talk about separately. There's a healthy competition, let us take it like that, among all the universities. See, if whether you look at that for also, NIRF no. ratings, for the NAC ratings, and for the QS ratings, everything, everything you do, there's a rating. And you have to really do better than what you do, so there's an aspiration going on. So that's the way we do things, right? That's, uh, that's how do you do healthy is what very important. The healthy competition is different from the unhealthy competition. How do you create that. a healthy competition is what you're asking. No, I'm then, not saying that. Uh, See, there are two different things. One is eligibility, another is competition. So for example, to have the knowledge of a subject, you require at least 40% marks. That is eligibility. Similarly with NAC accreditation. So if you are able to fulfill all the criteria, then you get rating out of that. NAC is not asking you to compete with other university. It is only saying that are you able to fulfill this criteria or not. That's all. We get into competition. <laughs> so it is just testing your eligibility. If you look at all the seven criteria, it is just testing your eligibility. And the good part is that there is a lot of emphasis on values there also. The last criterion, if you see, institutional values and best practices, when it is talking about research, it is also talking about extension. You cannot be sitting in one corner of the room and just doing research. You have to extend yourself to the last section of the society. They evaluate how much you have taken care of the deprived section of society. So NAC is not asking you to compete. We get into that false kind of practice of competing with other university. Correct. Uh, correct. Then why do you give a rating? No, in fact, 
now there is a new rule that no rating like that only clear or not clear yeah because many malpractices were entering into that you know so that's why they said so it is ultimately here also if you look at the students if you look at your own uh, personal life or your children there is no need for competing with the other i am clear about my needs i can produce more than what i require when i try to fetch respect by competing with the other then i am in trouble is that clear <laughs> yeah take a mic no so this are all okay no it's an ideal situation but you know everybody looks for the society society thinks only when you have more wealth you are respectable you get whatever you want society thinks in whatever physical facility you have then only you are prosperous therefore we more even though i completely agree with you but individually is fine but for society only controls everything unless you have you no know, good house good car you don't get the respect what is it is important no that is fine no, no, don't care about society so no, no, but see there are two ways let me say <laughs> there no, are most two of the people live for the society not for the self self is what do you need is now very, very little but, but you don't care about what the society says no no but everybody lives for society <laughs> no wait wait there are it is driven society driven that's what i mean see there are two ways to be with the society right one is to be dictated by the society the second thing is to make a society like your own <laughs> so it's not that the society is forcing you to do like that you are accepting or you are going by that see in a single city there are multiple colonies है ना हाई राइज बिल्डिंग्स लो राइज बिल्डिंग्स पॉस्ट कॉलोनीज नॉट सो पॉस्ट कॉलोनीज यू आर ऑप्टिंग फॉर अ पर्टिकुलर हाउस इन अ पॉस्ट कॉलोनी हु इज फोर्सिंग यू टू डू दैट इन फैक्ट सोसाइटी विल अप्रिशिएट इफ यू गॉट लॉट ऑफ वेल्थ एंड स्कोप बाय साइकिल they will appreciate oh god he has got so much money but he's going he's so humble he's so nice so there's another way of looking at it you know what i'm saying is the happiness comes from inside not from outside whatever they the one thing they can say they don't care Now the same society might also say as you know what a mad idiot he is he is going by cycle having this much wealth that is also possible so that's a risk thing so maybe as we said let us not bother about what the society talks about us let us see whether we derive happiness from within us that's it that's what yes exactly exactly <laughs> nice so this is a gross misunderstanding and at the root you can see this confusion is there wait 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 sir <laughs> nice we can also see that my needs are fulfilled by right understanding right feeling the needs of the body are fulfilled by physiochemical things like food is a physiochemical thing clothes is a physiochemical thing and you can see also that right understanding and right feeling is to be showed in the self so yeah if i am able to see this correctly then i can see that the source of happiness is inside it is based on right understanding right feeling not on something outside so the needs of the body cannot be fulfilled by right understanding right feeling alone needs of the self cannot be fulfilled by physiochemical things both have to be understood separately and fulfilled separately now let us find out in living what is the priority how much time and effort we are spending for right understanding right feeling how much time and effort we are spending for physical facility so there are 52 weeks in a year 
है ना एटलीस्ट वी कैन स्पेंड वन वीक इन अयर फॉर आइट अंडरस्टैंड दैट फीलिंग एटलीस्ट दैट मच प्रायोरिटी वी कैन गिव इज एंड इट इफ आई एम एबल टू गिव दैट प्रायोरिटी देन आई कैन फुलफिल दिस नीड एज वेल एज दिस नीड करेक्टली in fact if i am working in some organization i am getting physical facility out of this and a well and good this is desirable but if i am working for physical facility this is not desirable i have a role to play in the in the organization i am here as a part of education system isn't it so i am here to play my role as a faculty as a management you know so that is my role in return i am getting physical facility so my priority can shift with this understanding we can further see that my activities are different from the activities of body for example if i look at myself i can see that there is desire in me thought in me expectation in me together called as imagination in the body there is eating walking heart beat pulsation isn't it this is again something that we can see is temporary we must see so for example heart beat heart beat means essentially what expansion contraction is expansion continuous if the heart expands continuously what will happen <laughs> it will blow up hai na if it contracts continuously it is is going to cease so neither an expansion is continuous nor contraction is continuous all the activities are temporary if you look at this part your thoughts are going on all the time the content of thought may vary from time to time but the thought activity is continuing the desire is continuing desire may vary from time to time in pardon sleep find it out it is the proof when you are sleeping the thought process of the desire thing that's an akamat of the means i i will be going for the mind that's okay but the desires and thoughts will not be there when you are they have a deep sleep when you are being uh, an understate or the talk there also we can keep it open because how how do i say that in deep sleep it is not continuing if i am able to see that it is not continuing then i am seeing it so the activity is there right feeling in our thoughts also no we are taxing our body too much we do not have a sound sleep hai na why is that happening because there is lack of harmony in the thoughts if that harmony is there i am hai na comfortable while sleeping i am comfortable while awake so there is no waiting for a sound sleep all the time i am comfortable within i give rest to the body i sometimes make the body work for me isn't it but again you know just try to investigate it till see that the activities are continuous here but the activities are temporary here going further you can see that the response of the body is definite it is you know in a particular definite manner for example if you pierce a needle in the body blood will come out when a needle is sharp it goes inside the body blood comes out the response is definite now if some person is coming to you with a needle in hand will you allow or not <laughs> will you allow some person is coming to you with a needle in hand will not allow but if you are told that this person is a doctor and this needle is syringe and it has vaccine inside that can cure your you know or protect you from covid will you allow or not 
So the response is not definite here. It depends on assuming. I assume this person to be a good doctor, I allow. I assume this person to be kind of quack, you know, I do not allow. So that depends on my assumption. So the response of the self depends on assuming. There is no assuming here. Is there some assumption in the body? No. That assuming is there. And this activity of assuming distinguishes the self from the body. If I am clear about this, then only I can understand the rest of nature also. What's the difference between soul and self? Soul and self. Yeah, soul. You are in the class properly. Mm -hmm. You are late. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. It was already explained. Eh? It was already explained. Eh? Okay. So already explained. Eh? Okay, okay. No, no, I'm not saying that I've already explained, but yes, I can go about it again. So, soul is a word. Now I can associate that soul, that word, to the self or I can associate that word soul to the faculty of knowing in me. <coughs> so again, I have to see how I am relating that soul, that word soul to me. So soul is a conscious entity. I'll come to that. That is consciousness. Okay, this is material. So many times in the literature, the word soul has been used for the consciousness. Okay. Sometimes it has also been used for the faculty of knowing, saying that the soul is pure. Okay. The mind may be impure. So when you say mind, we try to associate mind to assuming, recognizing and fulfilling, soul to knowing. The soul is nothing but the knowledge, the knowledge, the jnana. So that's what it's called. So relate to the religious thing, you can easily catch it. You go to, go to no, no, if you explain to him, explain to me also. Otherwise, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. On the back side, everything is clear? Yes. Any questions from there? <laughs> so you can see that there is a difference in response here. The response depends on assuming here. The response depends, does not depend on anything yet. It is very much definite. <laughs> Now going further, you can see that I also have the faculty of knowing. For example, we are conducting this workshop since morning. Okay? Now there is something going on inside you, that self-exploration. In that process, we are trying to know the reality as it is. What is happiness? What is prosperity? Right? What is my basic aspiration? What is the difference between prosperity and possession of wealth? What we are trying to do essentially is knowing. The body is just working as an instrument in the process. So going by that same example, if I'm piercing the needle in the body, the body is recognizing it and fulfilling it. But whether I have to allow or disallow depends on my assuming. And my assuming may be without knowing or with knowing. So if I'm able to ensure the knowing in me, that is right understanding in me, my assuming becomes definite. I understand what self is, I understand what body is, I understand what health is, then my conduct is definite. So the problem is, when I am work, only working in the field of assuming, in the domain of assuming, going by certain acceptances, then I am in problem. <coughs> because there could be some assuming without knowing in me, that is working as a preconditioning, and then the assuming keeps changing. As you are seeing in that video, no? that in one season the assuming is that, I am you know, developed if I am using skinny heels. In another season, if I am using thick heels. And just see the kind of garments or the clothes that we are using. Some time back, the jeans came into Indian market, about 50 years back, if you see. At that time, the jeans used to have a normal color. Then came the weathered jeans. Then came torn jeans. What is happening here? The assuming is changing. What is modern, what is good, what is bad? is getting dictated by assuming. If 50 years back somebody was putting on a torn jean, he would be considered a deprived person. Now he is being considered a wealthy person. Fashion. Yes. <laughs> Trend. So when I am going by assuming, it keeps changing. And the conduct is indefinite. Yeah. 
But when I'm able to ensure knowing in me, then I feel resolved. Then I am able to verify for myself. Then I am able to you know, have a definite assuming based on knowing because the guidance is there. And then my conduct is definite. So this is the domain of problem. If I am only working in the domain of assuming without knowing, I am in trouble. But if I am able to ensure knowing through education, I am resolved. So the basic purpose of education is to take us from acceptance that is assuming to knowing. Is that fine? So you mean to say that you should not assume at all? That's what the lessons you are learning here. Because if you go back and look at lots of arguments and everything, the thought. Okay. The the question is. I know very well knowing is correctly and resolution is correct. That's the way to do. But there is an element of assumption is very important for the basic living. You know, uh, in, in Sanskrit, it comes very easily when we have a tarkam. Um, uh, if we have a smoke in a mountain, we always assume there's a fire. Okay, but generally it's true, but there can be even some passing clouds or something like that it may not be true 100%. But if you don't have an assumption, knowledge properly, even an argument and everything, you know, you can't really have a, a societal living. So assumption is also part of it, but the question right now is you can't go completely based on assumption, but you got to have verification process also has to go with that. So assumption is not bad. Assumption is critical in every walk of life. But the question right now is, don't assume things and do all the, like stereotyping, you know, for example, in US we always call all the blacks are bad people. They are muggers, they mug you, or something like that. But that's not true. You know what I'm saying? There are lots of good black people who are well educated and they do a good job in it. So the question is right now is, assumption is important, but in situations, you should not assume 100% and go by that. You have to verify your assumption and go forward with that. So assumption is also equally important in living. So you'll see that the activity of assuming is anywhere there. The self works by assuming. The activity of assuming is always there. It's only that whether it is guided by knowing or not. So we are assuming anyway. So when you are sitting here, we are assuming that the roof is not going to fall. Isn't it? <laughs> I just want to know whether this will fall or not. <laughs> and then we can see further. Right? So whatever I do, assuming is involved there. The point is that this is already taking place in me. I have to ensure this. And this process is education. And I'm able to know the reality as it is. What I am, what the body is, how I'm related to the body, what the other person is, what is my relationship with the other. This is the content of knowing. Anyway, we are living in relationships, isn't it? Either feeling fulfilled or unfulfilled, we are going that way. So the assuming is already there, it is continuing. Only that it has to be guided by knowing. So this is the world of consciousness. <clears throat> this is the world of material. So a human being is coexistence of material body and the consciousness that is me, self. Their needs are different, their activities are different, their response is different, the two are different. You can see further with little more exploration that this is temporary. All the needs are temporary, all the activities are temporary, the response is temporary. Its needs are continuous, activity is continuous, response is continuous, I am also continuous. If I am able to see this clearly, then I can see the body is an instrument of mind. In this whole lifetime, this body is an instrument. What for? To ensure this knowing. Because this knowing itself is going to ensure happiness in me in continuity. It's not the facility, it's not the body that will ensure happiness in continuity. It is the knowing, the right understanding, right feeling that will ensure happiness in continuity. And that is my takeaway from my life. The information that I gather, I may forget. If you are given to solve a second order differential equation today, non-linear, <laughs> you may not. You might have forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it? Though some years back you were able to solve it. Because that is a skill we forgot. 
we keep on getting so many you know, information, we keep on forgetting, we keep on forgetting the names. Make it a partial differential equation. Pardon? Be more interesting. <laughs> Your partial, partial differential equation is more interesting. Yeah. So you forget. But what I come to know, I never forget. It remains with me. So this is my takeaway from the life. If I want to show this knowing. And that is the purpose of education. Sir, certain things uh, we will never forget. For example, we learn bicycling, cycling in the young age. So even you now if you ask me to cycle, I will cycle. So you ask uh, swimming, for example. Uh, so like that, certain things are imbibed uh, in our system. So it is with our uh, body and mind. Uh, maybe uh, differential equations, what you say, uh, that may be a different phenomena. But these type of activities already it is will be there in our system, and it will never, we will never forget. So, but, 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 but the question I can ask is that continuous and temporary in nature, you may become physically weak so that you cannot ride a cycle. Even though it seems like you as a physical, you may not. So in that way, the soul, see, the difference is making between the soul and the body. So the body wise, you know, you may be 90 years or 100 years and you are living there, but your mind is, your soul is really functional the way it is, continuous and everything. But your body cannot function the way it is functioning. That's what is making. I think that's important here. Fine. Well, leave that. Now, going further, we can understand the self. We can talk more about self. Once I'm able to see that self is central to human existence, isn't it? And they are as a continuous entity. The body is material. My needs are continuous. My activities are continuous. So I need to understand myself now. When I look at myself, I can see that there is something in me which I call as imagination. Imagination is made up of desire, thought, expectation. That's a daydreaming. Pardon? That's a daydreaming. Yeah, even if you are not daydreaming. It's a daydreaming. <laughs> so you can see that there is desire in you. The basic desire is for a happy life, a fulfilling life. Now to fulfill that happy life, and now you have so many desires. Let my child have a good career. You know? Let my parents have good health. Let my spouse be happy with me. Let my neighbors you know, live this way with me. Let my colleagues go this way. So many desires we have, the sub-desires. For all those desires, we have thoughts. How to make it happen? How do I build a good career for my child? We keep on thinking, analyzing, comparing various options. Does it happen? And then we expect, okay, my child is preparing for JE this year, and I let him succeed. My child is appearing for competitive exam, let him succeed. You will see that some expectation or the other, some thought or the other, some desire or the other is always there in you. And that makes our imagination. What and it, that makes our imagination. That is the face of imagination. That makes. But that makes imagination. That makes imagination. So my imagination has desire, thought, expectation, which is continuous in me. And this imagination is there in me, not the body. The body is here. I am exchanging information with the body. For example, when I am talking to you, I have something in my imagination. I am sharing with you. So I am transmitting some information to the body, communicating to the body, and through the body the voice is coming out. And I can listen to your question, it goes to me, I again analyze and then communicate with the body. So this exchange of information is there as per the need. So this is the self, this is the body. So looking at myself I can see whether this is there in me or not, whether I am transacting information with the body or not. And you can see that your behavior and work is guided by your imagination. For example, if you are anxious within, and, uh, and somebody comes and pats on your back, how you are, and you react. This is the way to behave in the early morning. <laughs> Who told you to pat, pat on the back? Because you are anxious within. And, uh, somebody comes and tells you very fondly, good morning, sir. But if you're not comfortable within, right, you may not feel like responding to the other. So your behavior depends on your imagination, your thought, your desire. Similarly, your work. 
If you are lax within, you are efficient in your work. If you are troubled within, for example, not in this college, I am giving some other example. Say, retrenchment is taking place. Somebody's number has to come today or tomorrow. Now the faculty maybe is working, but all the time the faculty is bothered whether when my turn comes, for the time I asked to leave the institution. So if that is the case, in my imagination I am troubled, I am in turmoil. And then whatever I am doing, I am not able to do with full attention. So my work is getting disturbed. Does it happen? Or for example, somebody has to pay EMI for the house and the salary has not come. That thought is going on inside. And you have to prepare notes for the class. <laughs> so you can see that the quality of work will not be at par. So your work. The challenge here is right now is the behavior or vivaharam and the karyam are all temporary and they depends upon the, the imagination, right? But the problem is I'm in the class right now. I've got something else to do that's deciding in my mind, but I don't think about it now. So all the desire, thought, and expectation, even though it is in there, I don't think about it all the time. Yes. OK, the same way when I, when, when I think, when the, so the behavior will happen only when I start thinking about it. Yeah. So I so may have. It's also temporary in nature. I'm, I want to discuss that way. Because if you behave that the behavior and the work are temporary in nature, which is really the body behavior, the same way the desire, the thought, and expectation are also temporary in nature. Even though it is settled in the mind, it doesn't trigger to really do a behavior or an work or a work. So, so only if it doesn't trigger, it is it is not in the front of the mind to do it. It is in the back of the mind. That's all. So in that way, what do you say continuous in that case? You know. So two things are there. One thing is that behavior and work is temporary. Correct. The triggering of behavior and work is also temporary. But that triggering of behavior or work, Correct. the thought that triggers it Correct. is temporary. But the activity of thought is continuous. Every thought is not coming to a behavior. So you are thinking about something or the other all the time. But interacting only sometime. For example, here also, some are interacting, some are not interacting, for example. So behavior is maybe temporary. But the thought is going on all the time. Does it happen or not? So this is continuous, this part is temporary. But again, keep it open. Try to. The task is not to agree to me. The basic proposal is not to agree to me. The basic task is to look into it. Find it out yourself. Verify it yourself. The, so example, for the, the example you gave for the differential equations. I have done it before. It is a mind of the e, But since I don't trigger it often enough, I forgot. Yeah. So, so the content the trigger... of imagination is temporary. The activity of imagination is continuous. Fine, fine, fine. Okay. <laughs> I got it. Yeah. So the content is temporary. Correct, correct, correct. But the activity is continuous. Now you can also be observant of your content of imagination. What is going on inside me to be aware of the self, isn't it? So you can see that there is some content of imagination. It can have multiple sources. Like one source of my imagination could be some preconditioning. I have assumed something without knowing. Another source of imagination could be sensation, something that I get from the body. And the third source could be my natural acceptance. So for example, you go to a marriage celebration party, okay? you go buy an auto and you received in one way. One or two persons come and receive you. There is another friend of yours who goes by a luxurious, long, shining car and so many people assemble to receive him. Right? And then you assume that if I go by this car, I will get respect. If I go by auto, I will not get respect. What is happening here? We are associating respect to that car. It, this becomes a conditioning. It is not true. It is a question of the relationships. If the relationship between the person who is inviting you and you are important, it doesn't matter whether you come by walk or by auto or by car. Yeah. So the relationship is more important than this. For example, for a going for a wedding, right? The bridegroom people walking in. You say, oh, no, 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 there's only two people who will go. No, not true. 
all the people will go and welcome. So it's a relationship between the two individuals will make it whether it's going to be a warm welcome or a bad welcome. So it's not nothing to do with the way you drive the car or you go. So if I ever see the relationship here, then that will happen. Otherwise, I may get conditioned so many ways. You just try to find out you know, the things that we purchase in the house. From where are we getting that desire for the particular commodity? Yeah. So we are getting conditioned in a particular way. I'll cite an example. In fact, they, we have a center at Kanpur. And by the center, is, there is a village called Gorha. And that village is populated mostly by masons, people who build houses, masons. So in that village, there is one person who uh, used to work as a government servant, as a line man. He used to rectify the you know, electricity connections. So he was a government servant and everybody else in the village was a mason, a daily wage worker. So this person who was in a government job was having a single story house. And since every other in the house, in the village was a mason, they built their own houses and they made multiple stories. So his children started saying that, see, you are the lone person in the village who is in a government job. We are living in a single story house. These people are on daily wage, they are living in multiple story house. So what good you have done to our family? And this is not worth. So coming under pressure of his children, he invested all his provident fund and built a house of double story. Right? Now already the single story had five rooms. Now the double story together has 10 rooms. And by the time he could accomplish that, his sons had studied and you know, gone on a job. Daughters got married and went to their family. Now he and his wife are only residing there in a building of 10 rooms and not having anything to spend because the provident fund is gone. And they have to depend on their children now for day-to-day -day needs. So when he came, you know, he said that if I had attended this workshop earlier, I would have been in a much better state. <laughs> now this is a preconditioning. If everybody else is having a double-story house, why not I should have a double-story house? If everybody is purchasing a 4 BHK, why should I not go for a 4 BHK? Maybe we are only three people living in a family. Husband, wife and a single child. Maybe two room house is also enough. Two BHK is enough. But since everybody is going for 4 BHK, 3 BHK, why not go for that? Now people are purchasing villa. So why to live in a quarter? Things like that. We keep on comparing and getting conditioned because we are guided, misguided by preconditioning. But these things will not be there if you know what you mean. Yeah, but that is not clear, no. Since we are preconditioned, our imagination keeps on migrating like this. Now there could be another possibility. There could be another possibility that this person visited. There's another possibility that this person visited a relative of his own in the city and saw that this person living in the city in such a posh colony and he being a government servant you know, is living in a village. And this house looks so bright, so colorful from outside. The facade, if you see, is so catchy. And by that sensation, he thinks of selling the house and purchasing the house in the city. Then where is the imagination coming from? Sensation. So you can make out what is my source of imagination. The third source could be my natural acceptance, that I am able to see that, yes, you know, I require a house of this much of you know, uh, space and I am able to make it out correctly. Somebody was telling me that I want to purchase a house but I am not able to decide whether I should go for a 2 BHK or 3 BHK. When I told him that it is not important whether it is a 2 BHK house or 3 BHK house, more important is how many people can sit together in a house, in a room and chat together, <laughs> live together. You will see that if there is harmony in the family, all the people are found in a single room. If there is disharmony in the family, everybody is locked up in one's own room. Does it happen or not? <laughs> you seldom utilize all the space that is there in the house. You just try to make out the clothes that we have. Are we right utilizing all the clothes? The space in the house, are we utilizing the whole of the space? Isn't it? 
even nowadays if the look at the colony there are parks so you can go outside you know, and spend your evening and morning in the park why do you need a park inside the house why do you need a swimming pool inside the house and this way we are not able to make out our need for facilities rightly and then we are caught up in that loop let me have a villa for a villa i have to accumulate 1 crore rupees for that 1 crore rupees i have to spend at least 30 years of my life paying emi earning and paying emi <laughs> if you look at it closely we can be able to see how we are caught up by so many conditionings the preconditionings maybe ana you are sitting in your balcony of the house taking the morning tea and you find your neighbor coming you know with a very long shining bright red color car and you are mesmerized by the look of the car and you again start thinking of selling your own car and purchasing that kind of car does it happen <laughs> if it is happening what is the source of imagination <laughs> sensation and if you feel that this car is going to fetch respect for me what is happening <laughs> very conditioning but i can make out whether i need a car at all or not if at all i require what kind of car you know what would the price of car that is required there was one survey conducted in bangalore and it was found that the average speed of a person sitting in a car is slower than a person moving on cycle because there is so much of traffic jam <laughs> Isn't it? Chennai is catching up to you. <laughs> so we have to look into our imagination. We have to find out, you know, what is the source of imagination in me. So if I am dictated by preconditionings, I am enslaved. <laughs> Because something from outside is dictating my life. my choice for car my choice for house my choice for clothes my choice for mobile my choice for gadgets no. if i am associating that with respect that i am not understood i am preconditioned i am enslaved and you we'll see that neither it is definite nor continuous that it is going to ensure happiness or respect in me maybe somebody purchases a big villa hai na and people start talking in the colony that this person must be corrupt he has taken money somewhere <laughs> respect is gone <laughs> here if i am trying to fetch fetch happiness through sensation then also i am enslaved so we have five sense organs through eyes we get the sight isn't it through ears we get the sound through nose i get the smell through tongue i get the taste through skin i get the sensation of you know touch if i'm trying to fetch happiness through sensation then also i'm enslaved because this is neither definite nor continuous maybe some kind of music appeal to you 10 years back you like gazals now you don't like gazals you like rock music earlier you don't like rock music maybe you are very fond of kind of music which was also liked by your friend and this friend is no more for example when you listen to the same music you don't feel happy anymore you feel sad so it is not definite it is not continuous also while my innateness is continuity i want continuity so if my source of imagination is here then only it can be continuous then only it can be continuous there also if i am eating for taste i am enslaved if i am eating for health of the body i am self organized so i can decide myself you know what is the purpose of food that i am taking there is a story about a professor that he used to drink a lot you know and once it so happened that he lay down by the road side and he was mocked a lot by the people in the colony so he took a vow that next day i am not from next day i am not going to drink at all so from we, when we went from the college to the house then there was one liquor shop on the way so as he was nearing the house the liquor shop was also nearing so he bowed again he cleaned his fist you know 
close his eyes that I have to you know, somehow you know, pass this liquor shop. And he did this and he passed also. And then he looked back that yes, the liquor shop is gone. And then said that yes, professor, you have made it today. Let us have it. <laughs> You have a preconditioned assumption that healthy foods are not tasty foods. That's a wrong thing. I'm not saying that. Preconditioning done. Yeah. So I'm not saying that. I'm saying that if I understand health, I get taste out of healthy food only. If something is there which is going to spoil your liver, your kidney, and and if you are aware, how can you feel the taste there? You are aware that this is going to spoil your kidney or the liver or the heart. But people drink, though they are aware that they will have uh, alcohol in them. Yeah. Smoking. Yeah, smoking or smoking for the simple pressure. It's temporary image. Yeah. So basically, they are aspiring for happiness, yeah. and that source is not activated. So they are trying to look for here or here. Correct. They are state on the table. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Any questions? Very interesting. So the core issue is that is this source active in me or not, or I am working here or here. So whatever I do in the domain of one and two, I am again enslaved. That basic denominator of deprivation and unhappiness will continue. Because the happiness is not going to be continuous this way. So it may be the case that our living is like this. A very small part of imagination is guided by natural acceptance. Largely it is enslaved by preconditioning or sensation. <laughs> Immaturity. <laughs> so that is the case, you know, when I have to analyze myself. Ultimately, what I want is this, that my complete imagination has to be guided by right understanding. This is the desired state. <laughs> Then only the happiness can continue. So the right understanding here is to be activated in myself so that my complete imagination is guided by right understanding. <laughs> Still the right side will not be continuous. Pardon? Right side will not be continuous, but the, because you've got the good strong on the right side, the continuous <laughs> one, you have behavior in the world. What will be really happiness for you? Right? Happiness. Within you, there will be continuity of harmony. Why? Because I am able to see the things as they are. The right understanding is complete in no, me. No, no. I am saying with the right understanding, if you do it, you will still have a temporary work and temporary behavior only, which is giving you temporary understanding. But you have got a desire and thoughts to be right, which is really nothing. Yeah, so the behavior and work is going to be temporary. If there is something to do with the body... No, I am not saying that. Imagination is fully guided by that understanding. It is continuous. The content of imagination is now guided from here. And then from time to time as per the need, I behave and work. So I will do a simple exercise. Anna? We'll make a list of desires and then we'll try to enlarge the desires. Okay? So we'll do one simple exercise here. We have that homework also to be done. So let us. So in all of us like us. No, that too is not blank. Basically, okay, right understanding. Right? The first one is the right of understanding the thing. No? Okay. okay. <laughs> That's what tomorrow. No, no, no. Oh, okay. Second batch of three days. It's more than PhD now. It's more, more than PhD now. Okay. So I'm going to make a list of desires. Maybe we can list 10 or 20 desires. And then we'll analyze those desires. Okay? So let us make a list. Yes, what is the desire? 
So we'll want to replace yeah. Modi. <laughs> so we can take something from backside. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Audience, mom fans. What is your desire? My desire. Uh, it may be very generic. Uh, my desire is to like be happy. Whatever I expect at that moment, it's very short window desires for me. So at for a small window, whatever I expect, if it happens, then uh, it's fine. There's no like big desire for me. I want to be happy. That's it. To be happy. Happier. From these three ladies here. Yeah, complicated. Okay, next. Okay, for me, uh, a happy family. That's the first desire. Okay. List in area. Come on, come on. Sir, name is okay. Sir, my desire is uh, whatever things going on, it is not under my control. That is what I feel most of the times. <laughs> and, and one more thing I wanted to tell you, in the morning we were discussing about uh, the relationship between husband and wife. I remember that uh, Infosys Naranamuthi wife has said once in an interview that I am always happy because I am not with my husband all the time. <laughs> he is always flying and I am alone, so we don't have much time to sit together and talk. In that way also I am very happy. That is what she said and uh, Naranamuthi also happy. That is what, uh, according to her, uh, it is only a statement, just I wanted to record here, that's all. And uh, my desire, if you ask, I feel that my mind should be always accept what is going on and be get along with that and be happy. That is what I used to think. That is that itself is my desire. I wanted to make my mind that I am always happy and get along with what is going on around me. Yeah, sir. If even the face <laughs> My desire is to learn. <laughs> to be happy with friends and relatives. They say uh, accept as it is, sir. The situation and people, uh, whoever it is there, accept and uh, get along with them. Yeah, so the same Situation and people. That, that is the fact. <laughs> we need to train. Mom. <laughs> Sir, I wanted to go all around the world and see places, people, and know about their culture. Genuine <laughs> desire. My desire is to spend with my family most of the time and uh, some of my hobbies are not fulfilled like painting or something so I should feel I need some time to do all those things. <laughs> <laughs> Healthy family. Healthy family. I should be healthy till my last breath to support my family, family members, to take care of my family members. 
Mom, Ani, Mom, near work. Uh, my desires are according to the current situation. Currently, I just wanted to settle my kids. Okay, to settle my kids. Settle my kids. kids. Different. I desire for a very a world which is kind and fair, especially for the animals. Uh, to be self-content, that is satisfied with uh, the existing things. Try to. It's to serve others. To be youthful and independent to the end. Okay. Uh, mine will be... One minute, one minute. Mine will be a little different. I want a very peaceful and quick death. Peaceful death, sudden death, like Abdul Kalam. <laughs> okay, anyway. Sir, uh, yeah. another one president award for my research, sir. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Badu, sir. People are happy around me, which is not happening. Sir, last year, Shastri was, sir, was to complete. Sir, actually, the biggest... The biggest problem I face is that I told three wish desires I have. Ma'am knows about it. I have to live for 65 years. Should work till 65 and die peacefully. That's what I was thinking, all the three desires. But already everybody covered. So I changed my desire now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 23 years in training and placement, I'm yet to meet one ethical company. <laughs> Want to see an ethical company in my lifetime. <laughs> Hi. Nice. Now we'll analyze these desires. So what we can do is the desire related to the self, we'll call it one. Full always. It has come out, I think, to have peace. Yeah. So let's say peace. So let us see whether the desire is related to the self or the body. To be happy. You didn't, you didn't ask me. I want to say one more thing. Because only 17. I want to wait for till 20. You said 20. So I thought I'll wait till the 20. You are only 17 now, right? Okay, three more. You can go three more, right? Okay, okay, fine. <laughs> yeah. I really want to really identify correctly and know myself very well. To know, know myself. myself. Okay. To know, know myself. All these years you don't If I go, I will not be glad. Lead a peaceful life with my family. That came, peace all the time with family. <laughs> nice. So let us analyze this. To be happy. Okay. One more, one more. One more. Yeah. Okay, one more, yes. Uh, to settle at the end uh, that, you know, in the environment that is close to the nature. To settle close to the nature. Yeah. <laughs> Fine. Now let us analyze this. Okay. To leave my footsteps. <laughs> Happy family. Hmm? Okay.
Okay. So this is to do with the self. With the self. Okay. I will just put a tick mark here. And then I will remove this. <coughs> self. To learn. To yes. tour the world. How with the body? Is it to do with the self or the body? How do we make out? So whenever it appears that it is connected to both self and body, we have to look into the purpose. So what is the purpose of touring the world? If the body gets healthier by touring the world, it is to do with the body. If I am trying to fetch happiness out of touring, it is to do with the self. So again you have to look at your level, yourself, from where the desire is coming. So maybe it is the self, but for yourself you can make out. The same may not be true for the other. To fulfill my hobbies, healthy family, what do you say? So when you have the desire for a healthy family, if the family is healthy, who is going to get fulfilled? You or your body? So again we have to see who is getting fulfilled, self or body. If somebody is writing food or good food, then it is to do with the body. Health till last breath. To settle my kids, kind and fair world around me, to be satisfied, to have strength to serve others. Again, when you have the strength to serve others, who is getting fulfilled? Eras Ganesh Kumar. Self. Peaceful death. President Award for Research. Keeping people happy. <laughs> In fact, the better part of the self is coming out. Right? <laughs> to see an ethical company, peace all the time. Here again, we can bifurcate self or body. To know myself, peaceful life with the family, to settle close to the nature, self or body, self. to leave my footsteps. Now, <laughs> so in this whole list, we can see. The desire that you could list here. But I'll say that keep it a kind of personal exercise for yourself. Go home, list all the kinds of desires. All the desires which may not be communicable to the other also. Try to list it. Try to find out for yourself whether it is to do something with the self or the body. Who is going to get fulfilled out of this? For example, AC in my house, for example. If it is for health, it is to do with the body. If it is for respect, by my neighbors, it is to do with the self. So that way, I can properly analyze my desires. Now the next thing that we are going to do, if it is related to preconditioning, again we can make out. What is the relationship here? So A would mean preconditioning. B would mean sensation, C would mean natural acceptance. Now we can again study the desires. To be happy with friends and relatives, what is the source of this desire? I feel it's weaker. Okay, who was saying this? In fact, there was one desire to be happy and then somebody said, with my friends and relatives. So what is the source of desire? How do I make out? So is it naturally acceptable to you to be happy? Yeah. 
Yeah. So if that is the case, if I feel that I can be happy only when others are there with me, then again I am enslaved because if the other person is not there, I feel unhappy. So again I have to see. So again you have to make out from where I am getting this desire. So it could be A, B or C depending on your source. But it can't be the case that all the three are there. No, you have to see the source, proper source from where you are getting this desire. So to be happy is C, but with friends or families, it could be A or C. You have to make out for yourself. Similarly, happy family. So the desire for a happy family, is it acceptable to you naturally or not? No, I'm saying happy family, not happy with the family. Happy if it happy family, see, to get along with circumstances, whatever they are, I'm fine with it. What does it mean? We have to analyze. Who was saying this? Sir was, no, somebody. So, I have to find out. What does it mean? It means whatever happens, I am resolved within. Whatever happens around me, I am resolved within. This is acceptable to me naturally. But whatever happens doesn't matter to me. Some casualty is there in the family and it doesn't matter to me. It is not acceptable naturally. Isn't it? Something untoward happens to my friend, it doesn't matter to me. So I have to make out what this, this means to me. And then I can make out whether it's A, B or C. To learn. To learn what? What do I want to learn? G? Yeah, again you have to see the purpose. So you have to make out the purpose. <coughs> or source. Why should, I learn? Why should I learn? If I feel that if I learn this particular technique, I am going to make millions. If I learn chat GPT today, I am going to get a more uh, this thing, high paying job and this will fetch and so much of income. For example, I am just giving an example. Then the source could be some preconditioning. But if I want to learn so that I can communicate right understanding to the other, it is naturally acceptable. So I have to make out what do I want to learn, why do I want to learn. To tour the world, why? <laughs> so if I am trying to tour the world so that I can feel related to all, I can see the relationship, fulfill the relationship, this is one thing. If I am trying to tour the world for good sights, good sightseeing, then it is coming from sensation. If I am trying to tour the world for sightseeing, sensation. If I am trying to tour the world so that when I come back, I can tell everybody that there is not a single spot on this planet that I have left untouched. <laughs> for example, you know, I have toured the world enough, now I have to go into space. You know. Then it is coming from some preconditioning. So that is the way I have to analyze for myself. And this is a kind of research that you have to do upon yourself. You have to dig into yourself. You have to make out your own imagination, what it is, why is it so, what desires you are carrying within, from where the desire is coming. If you fulfill that desire, for example, if I tour the world, will I be happy in continuity? No. Yeah. Yeah. So again, so maybe it is coming from sensation. Yeah. If that photo is not coming properly, I'm getting the problem. Yeah. <laughs> or you go to some place, for example, you know, it's not something to what ma'am is saying. Yeah. So ma'am was saying so that I can you know, relate to people all around the world, what ma'am was saying. You are saying no? Yeah. So if that is the case, if it is the, with the feeling of relationship, if it is for relationship, then this is to do with? See, 
But if it is for sensation, then it is B. So this way I have to find out to fulfill my hobbies. Why? So in the assignment, you have to do this kind of thing. You, know, you have to analyze your desire. You have to study your desires. So the outcome, pardon? Then you are able to make out the source of desire and you are able to evaluate yourself rightly. How much of my imagination is dictated by preconditioning? How much of my imagination is dictated by sensation? And what part is coming from natural acceptance? I have to ultimately ensure this, that the whole imagination is guided by natural acceptance. Then only I can be happy in continuity. And essentially what we need to do is to ensure this. Imagination is fully guided by right understanding and that is the role of education sanskar. So we may be living here somewhere, but essentially I have to be here. For that I have to self-explore, I have to invest investigate myself, I have to analyze myself, I have to validate the proposals, verify the proposals. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. In fact, if you look at the present schools also, you know, I do remember that in our time, not a single school had air conditioning. <laughs> now, if there is some school without AC, there is no admission. And there are children who are sitting in the AC and they are getting cough and cold all the time. Fever, cough and cold. But this has become a mark of you know, good school, that it has AC, it has you know, so many smart services. And the content of education, if you see, you are paying 10,000, 20,000 for the school and then in the evening you have to hire a tutor. <laughs> and you have to pay 5,000 to the tutor every month because the school is not teaching sufficiently to the child. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This time, I am counting it, yeah. So this kind of transformation is required. So to put it all together, this is the sum up. Human being is coexistence of self and body. Self is consciousness. It needs our feeling in consciousness. And these are fulfilled by activity of consciousness. Body is material. Its needs are material. And also fulfilled by material. The need of consciousness cannot be fulfilled by material. The need of material cannot be fulfilled by consciousness alone. The two have to be understood separately and fulfilled separately. The response of the body is definite. The self has a choice. If the acceptance that you are assuming is based on knowing, the response is definite. Definite conduct is there. If it is without knowing, the response is indefinite. And indefinite conduct is there. So this is all that we are trying to convey. This is the takeaway of the you know, lunch after the session after the lunch.